You are listening to ITRboxing.com radio with your host, Luke. Felix Garcia. Yo, what up, y'all? I'm on, uh, what, day three of going to work and going right home because there's nothing else open in the city. So that's that's it. And then pretty soon we'll be working from home. So I'll be stuck at home as well. And uh, uh, honestly, like, and I'm not just saying this to to just be heartfelt, but I really appreciate you working through a time like this because what's <clears throat> awful about this situation that we're facing is we literally don't know what we're facing. So what sucks yeah. is it could be the worst thing or it could be the littlest thing or it could be like a catastrophe. It just sucks feeling like there's a tidal wave above us and we have no idea what's happening. So it's like, yeah. it, I really applaud the people that are working in any industry that are still working in a time like this. I'm afforded a luxury to not have to work. And um, yeah, so let's, let's not talk about that because that's going to be pretty much <laughs> everywhere. Um, the world for me right now is a black cloud of just reading about um, basically terrible stuff that could happen. And it's not helping my anxiety levels. So especially that I'm, I hate to say it, in America, I'm basically at ground zero. I'm in the Bay Area. So whatever happens where I live is going to be the, the example for the rest of America, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. I mean, it's either us or New York, but we're basically exactly. ground level. So it's pretty overwhelming. Um, I don't want to say it's not going to be anything because it's been hyped up so much. I'm pretty fearful, but I'm going to jump on this podcast with you and we're going to have a great conversation about boxing, yes. a fight. So explain to the viewers what we're going to do and then we're going to queue it up. So earlier today, um, I saw that, you know, we're actually going to have an ITR podcast reunion pretty soon. And excuse me, because <clears throat> I am battling a cough. It's not the virus, so save the jokes, everybody. But um, earlier today, like I said, I saw the, the tweet. We're going to have an ITR reunion. And I figured tonight, since I was doing nothing, you were doing nothing, let's do a watch along. I've been hearing, seeing and hearing people do these, and it's pretty interesting. So what we're going to do, and if you're listening at home, I urge you to do this as well. We're going to load up from HBO Boxing's YouTube channel. Uh, Tim Bradley versus Ruslan Provodnikov. And we're just going to commentate and talk through the fight as we're watching it. So I have it queued up and ready whenever you're ready. So I have it at, I it. Have it at one minute and 15 seconds for those <laughs> listening along and for Felix. So if you can put it to 115 oh, yeah. and then tell me when to push play. Yeah, let me. All right, here we go. I'm at 113. All right. Okay, oh, I, pushed I pushed play. So we're getting Ruslan announced. So at this time, Ruslan Provodnikov was definitely thought of more as like kind of a journeyman, a guy who was more of a Friday Night Fights guy. He wasn't viewed as a guy that should be on a major network like HBO. And in this era, it was um, kind of moving away from American fighters and focusing on foreign fighters. So there was Golovkin, Loma, and Ruslan Provodnikov and Sergey Kovalev on HBO. Yeah, and then Tim Bradley was coming off his controversial, uh, you know, or split decision over Manny Pacquiao, so <clears throat> he was on a mission to win back some of the fans because he was getting literally death threats, um, hate mail. Like he was on a mission to win back not only the fans but prove to himself that he is that guy. So this was a perfect fight for him and then a perfect opponent. And as we're about to watch break down, he. He definitely gave back to the fans this night. Probably, this is probably top five fight of this decade, and it'll probably be remembered as a, a classic. It, I think it's the fight, despite what most people will think, it's the fight that defined Tim Bradley's career. It's the fight that oh, you yeah. really should look at and say that's a champion because of this fight and not maybe the Pacquiao fights, which people think of in certain lights or not. So we have Joel Diaz in the corner for... Bradley, and we got Freddie Roach in Reese Lawn's corner. And, you know, a lot of people honestly say, too, this was the the last time both of these guys were this good that this fight took so much out of them. Probably, like, when boxing Twitter was first kind of getting going. <laughs> like, 
this was probably like the first few fights where boxing Twitter was like a faction and people were like, Hey, we can use this service and meet up for fights. We can express our opinions. We can have a, a goof. We can get on this platform and have people that will listen to us. So this is one of the fights where I feel like this fight was also elevated by Twitter. Yeah. Agree. So the fight's starting out, and Tim is kind of doing what you expected him to do. Uh, he's on his back foot boxing, and Ruslan, on the other hand, really abnormally buff in this fight. Probably best shape of Ruslan's yeah. ever career, and he's very, very tricky. He's looking like a kind of like Golovkin in this fight, the way he's cutting off the ring. Uh, yeah, and it's rare that you'll see anybody more muscular than Tim Bradley in the ring, but this is one of those fights where you can make that argument. So, not to have dead air or anything, it really looked like, when I was watching this live, like Ruslan was really, really looking for a punch, and Tim was just trying to punch with him, but Ruslan, uh, and it, re-watching this, it's very apparent, was very confident going into this fight. He did not believe yeah. Tim Bradley could hurt him. And it, you can see in his face, this was a moment that he felt like he could capitalize on. <coughs> I agree. And it feels like they, uh, you can tell that that's exactly how they prepared in the training camp. Um, and he's already executing his plan immediately. He didn't waste any time getting in there doing exactly what they practiced in camp. And one thing I'm also noticing, I think a lot of people – and we'll see as this goes on that Tim wanted to exchange. Now they're in the pocket and Tim's willing to exchange. But I think a lot of Tim having to exchange with Ruslan is Ruslan was not giving Tim Bradley any space. So he's trying to just give yeah. him get a break because he's for, Ruslan's forcing a dramatic pace. Now they're exchanging a lot. Big time. And you can, you can tell immediately Bradley knew he had to give the boxing away. He had to get in there and get his respect. This is basically Rocky One. He's doing the Apollo Creek, and he's trying to get his respect in there, man. Because I think that. Especially, oh, go ahead. Especially in his home, in his home adopted hometown here, at Carson City, he was not going to let somebody go out there and outshine him in his first major defense of his title. And I, what I also noticed about Tim is Tim's probably one of the most mentally tough guys, so he's probably saying like, "This oh, is yeah. really annoying." This guy's putting a lot of mental pressure on me. I'm supposed to be the ultimate mental pressure guy. So I think he's trying to, to sway the tide of pressure on Ruslan. And he's landing some really good punches, a really good right hand. Um, yeah, and Ruslan knows. Ooh, there it is. But it's called a slip. A right already. It's called a slip, and and Bradley's down and stumbling. Bradley's down. So that cost Ruslan the fight. He's hurt bad. Yeah, that definitely did. That was a 10-8 round, without a doubt. <clears throat> that was a bad call. It was definitely the angle that the referee was at, but it was, ooh. And Pat Russell is not that um, active of a referee anymore. Yeah, that is true. Kind of the thing I didn't really love <laughs> that HBO would do, let's film the family members. And for this fight, yeah. it was not the best time to film uh, Monica Bradley. Like, probably one of the worst fights to be like, let's see how the family thinks. And you can see the nervousness on their face immediately. Joel Diaz. You hear Joel Diaz being very <laughs> colorful. Not a lot of technical instruction, a lot of yelling. Yeah, definitely. And that's, when you think about the temperament of Tim Bradley, that's... If I'm Tim Bradley, that's what's going on in my head. I'm, I'm hearing yelling. He's, he's an intense guy, so that's that's perfect. Probably the best way to communicate with him in a fight, although we can't. Yeah, um, yeah he just got beat with a right hand, and that's what caused that knockdown that mm. wasn't called by Pat Russell. But, okay, second round is out, and it's either the second or the third is a major Ruslan round. Yeah, I believe it is this one. Uh, and they, they exchanged so many good rounds, too. <coughs> this damn cough, man. Bradley a little bit on his feet again, trying to get his rhythm back. But he, he knows it's a dog fight. But when he gets a chance, he's, he's boxing. Yeah, it's uh, 
it's intense because like when I'm seeing when I'm rewatching this is a lot of people are saying, Oh, Ruslan's coming forward, he's not using his jab, but what he's doing is he's using a lot of head movement, which is proactive as a jab, and he's using a jab enough where he, uh, Bradley has to guess is he gonna slip and try to throw power or is he gonna jab? Mm. And he caught him again with the right hand. The right hand again. And they're just trading. This is amazing. Oh, my God. The right hand, the angle Ruslan's throwing it from, the way Tim Bradley throws his right hand, it's blind. So when he throws that punch, Tim can't see it coming, the way he throws his right hand. It's a very awkward, awkward overhand looping right. And it's landing every single time right on the jaw. Yeah, this is, and they're both, you can see Ruslan's face is already showing somewhere in Sarah, too. I mean, that was kind of like the Ruslan thing was like, take a punch, but he's going to give you hell. And that was a hook that time that started that one. Tim's stuck in the corner now with Ruslan Provodnikov, which is probably the worst place to be, but he's pretty elusive in the corner. Now he's getting his way out, but he's, it's really dangerous. He's got a big hook on the way out. Oh, well, Ruslan slipped. Ruslan basically that was an actual slip. threw as much power into a punch where he knocked himself down because it didn't connect. That's how <laughs> exactly. hard he was throwing. And it's just like Ruslan is literally just trying to knock Tim Bradley out. He's just in the pocket throwing everything, not caring if he gasses out. Oh. And Tim's just taking these punches. And Tim is not he – he has the ability to go box it. I think he, he can't is, now, box. right now. I, I think he can't because I think he's rocked. I think he's I think he's yeah, hurt he and I think he's just fighting back because I don't think his legs are there. Now if you look his legs are gone. Yeah, yep. There's and he's just being here. held up by the ropes right here. This is oh. if this was nowadays this might be stopped on the ropes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's in he's in bad shape. He's on bad shape. Right he's with swinging. what we know about concussion protocol and weight cut with the CSAC. Oh yeah. I don't know if that makes it out of the round. And now this controversial opinion, this could have been a 10-8 round. Even though there wasn't a oh, knockdown, that was a Tim Bradley was hurt on the rope. Was... So we got it 2018 uh, Ruslan? Is that how we're calling it? Yeah, definitely. I'd say so. That first one should have been a knockdown. Without so a... are we going to call it like it's a knockdown, or are we going to just go by the referee's discretion? I mean, if we're a judge at ringside... You have to go by the judge's discretion or the the referee's yes, discretion. Yes, so right? we're gonna go. We're gonna judge it like so. we're a referee. So we got him in the building. We got I mean, Freddie Roach in the corner, and I'm hearing a lot of uh, concise instruction that's probably being translated quickly in Ruslan's native language. You can see the the, re- the marking, even though Bradley's not really a big power puncher. You can see the marks all over Ruslan's face and even on his shoulder there, too, because Bradley was just letting his hands go, not really caring where he was landing. Oh, man, that hook was rough. One thing I'm noticing is all Ruslan's looking is to throw a right hand and a left hook. That's all he's looking for. Yeah, look at Bradley starting off hot. Well, Tim, I think in this round is saying, okay, I'm going to get your respect. You're going to chill out, and then I can just get to boxing. Like, you're going to stop Ruslan coming out. A little gas. It looks like Ruslan punched himself out. So it looks like Tim's like, okay, this is going to be my get back round. His arms are down. His tongue is hanging out. Yeah, he definitely looks like he's in the 12th round. Of the and round. he's also doing the spaghetti spaghetti arm shake where he's shaking his arms out. Yeah. They look a little tight. Bradley's doing some good work now. Well, this is Bradley's fight. This is a, a fight where it's it's range <laughs> finding, it's distance, and this favors the more experienced fighter. Bradley had more amateur fights and more experience, so let's favor him. Yeah, without a doubt. He's using the time. You can tell Ruslan is definitely trying to get a breather, and he's boxing beautifully. He's he's not going in there to fight in the pocket now. He's taking his time because he needs a breather as well. Yeah. Yeah. I've never paid attention to how gassed Ruslan was at the beginning of this round. Well, I don't think we, at the time, you thought about it because when we watched it, 
uh, Ruslan, it was incredible what he was doing. So it wasn't like we were like, oh, man, he's really gassed in the third round. It was more like, dude, Ruslan's up two rounds to zip. So basically, yeah. Ruslan took yeah, off the point. third round. So he gave Bradley this the third yeah. round because he just can't keep the pace. So Bradley, outside of there's a knockdown late in the round, this is a dominant Tim Bradley round, just staying on the outside, doing what he needs to do. Yeah, not a whole lot of movement, but he's doing he's doing exactly what he needs to do without expanding a lot of energy. Man. And I'm sure he's trying to clear the cobwebs as well because he was shaking up. I mean, it's impressive time. Tim got his legs back this quickly. <laughs> yeah, the recovery. <coughs> Ruslan is trying to taunt, but really he's sucking in air. You can tell he's starting to warm up a little bit in there. He's looking for that right hand again. Man, this is this is a good one. Ooh. Yeah, without a doubt. And that's the one thing I love about this venue, that uh, the Home Depot Center. It is one of my favorite venues for boxing. Um, it's the crowd is always legit there. Um, the vibe is always right, and I don't think there's ever been a bad fight night at that arena. I mean, I think it's, I personally don't like it because every time I go there, I tend to get sick because it's like, it Ooh. tends to get really cold at it's night always cold. and I tend to be there yeah. for long periods of time. But if you can go in and out within two to three hours, not a bad venue. It's yeah. just, if you, yeah. And the funny the, excuse me. The funny thing about that is, you get there and it's not cold, and as the sun goes down and the temperature drops, you're you need a light. Well, I've always said the dangerous thing about the Home Depot or the StubHub or what the Divinity Dignity Health Center, whatever you want to call it, is the big <laughs> thing is it's a fluctuation from hot to cold, and that's what gets people because your body doesn't yeah. get a real acclimate to anything. Exactly. And I don't know if you saw in the top right corner right now, you could see the ring girls putting on a robe as they sat down because it's definitely a chilly night out there. I think this fight was about, like last week was the the anniversary of it too. So the Letterman card, what did, we, what did Harold have? Uh, he, uh, you know, I think he had that. I didn't even pay attention to that, and I'm not going to rewind it. We'll have to wait again. <laughs> I think he had a 3 0 Paradnica. Oh, that's pretty bad. I mean, we got it 2 1. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, uh, it's definitely 2 1. Ooh, that was another right hand again. <laughs> it's like target practice. Whenever he throws that right hand, it's going to land. Bradley turned southpaw real quick. <clears throat> I wonder how much success he would have had fighting out of the Who, southpaw Tim or, throughout the duration um, of this fight. Tim. I, I just think this is a this is a tough <coughs> a tough matchup for Tim because it's just everything everything that yeah. doesn't work. And Tim is landing bombs on him still too. I see blood in the bottom of Kravnikov's nose, I believe. It's definitely rough. Mm. There's that right hand again. He's done. He's done to the bombs. It's, it's. I'm not sure if it's. Bradley usually has a decent guard, but it seems like Ravondo Kalev is landing right above it. So, well, there, what we're learning from this rewatch is there's an art to the madness of Ruslan Provodnikov. It's not just sure he's not this defensive wizard, but he's got some of the offensive traits that Gennady Golovkin had. He just didn't have the horsepower. Yeah, definitely. And that was some beautiful work by Bradley just now too. These combinations. 
So, I, mean, I think Bradley has a really uh, underrated hand speed. <laughs> he doesn't get a lot of credit or doesn't get enough credit. His him. hand speed's good in this fight. And I think the other thing about Tim is he's probably the, the fighter that got the most out of what he had. He probably got the most, Absolutely. like, he's the working man's fighter. He's the American dream of boxers. And I think this is the flurry that gets weird. Is this the one? Yeah. I believe so. I might, so that, I, maybe I think one. that's 2-2. Two, two. That. That's 2-2. Two, nice two. So I've got it 38-38. Yeah. Ruslan was doing a little better, but it Same. looks like Ruslan's pretty doggone tired. And Tim's finding his way in this fight. Yeah, Ruslan had, uh, looks like he definitely spent way too much energy in, that, in the first two rounds. And you could tell as at the opening bout, he was hunting for that knockout. So he's he need, he's needed to calm down, and that's what he's he's getting back into his groove a little bit. But you could see his face is swelling up a little bit too. And he has those high cheekbones as well, which never is never good for boxers. There's that right hand again, <clears throat> right on the chin, right over the jab, too. And the fact that Bradley's, as we were just alluding to, his hand speed, and Kovanikov is timing that jab perfectly, landing it. That says a lot about him, too. Yeah, it's just, it's tough, man. Oh, yeah, there it is, 38. 30. Yeah, he has it the same. Perfect as card. So I, I think that it's a very easy fight to score. Tim Bradley was wearing the Nike boxing. I think he probably was probably one of the first fighters to wear Nike boxing outside of Manny Pacquiao, would you say? Yeah, I think it was after the Pacquiao fight, he was on board with the Nike. And then after that, I think the only other ones I remember was Chavez and Andre Ward Jordan, and Brand. Jordan, which was same, and si- Go- similar. And Golovkin similar and Roy had Jordan. Yes. I, Nike doesn't have any no. fighters. So, like um, Tim looks a little frustrated that Ruslan's getting his power back up. That Ruslan's cutting the ring off. He He's done two straight rounds, and Ruslan's still not going away. Tim's got good hand speed, but he's doing – this is a classic Felix. This is the – Tim Bradley's doing a whole lot of, a lot of work to Ruslan just barely doing stuff. Yes, and the, the difference I'm noticing right now, too, is there's not as much pop in Bradley's punches uh, as it looks like he's just trying to pepper uh, providing the cop to keep him away, and that's not working. Yeah, it's just there's not... Ruslan feels like he can take these shots all day, and Tim's kind of like going like, what the heck kind of animal are you where you can just take my punches? Like, you're yeah. this... What made this fight difficult is Ruslan basically made a commitment to take 900 clean punches. Oof. Yes. Ooh. He's, he's, Bradley's landing well, some bombs. Bradley, on. now this is where Bradley, I think, is getting in trouble in this fight is <laughs> he's right really right. trying to get this guy's respect, and it's kind of messing with him mentally, I think, that he's not backing up. And then when they get in the pocket, Ruslan has this overhand right left hook thing that he's looking to do. And there it is. Yeah. So when they're in close, Ruslan's going overhand right, left hook. That's all he's going to do. And he landed that hook again. That hook, you can tell. And now he's switching it up. So he's throwing the lead left hook every now and then. And Bradley's throwing everything. Yeah, Bradley's doing some body work. work Good right, right hook to the body. Bradley, to me, on his face, he's just looking like, what do I have to do to get this guy to chill out? That's what I see on his face. Yeah, exactly. You can start seeing the, the swelling on Bradley's face as well now, too. So this Ooh, is another big hook. 48-47 Bradley. That was a tough I round. Think. What, how would you score it? Yeah. I I, I give Bradley the, Bradley the edge. There was a, a good portion of that round where he had Provodnikov against the ropes there. Look at Oscar Valdez. This is, Early Oscar this Valdez. Is this is a nice little treat. Pre-world champion Oscar Valdez. Yeah, this is awesome. Ooh, nice. 
<laughs> nice little treat Always that you got. That is a young Oscar Valdez. Yeah, that's awesome. It would be fun to do an Oscar Valdez rewatchable because he's a guy that I feel like doesn't get his respect that he really deserves. Oh, yeah. So. We should get Oscar That would be cool, man. If you could set that up, that I'm sure he's got plenty of time being a being between places in this crisis. That would be cool to have him watch it yeah, with us and true. explain things. So Harold Letterman, for all the crap people give him, he has the same card as us. It's going, so if it's me, you, and Harold... We're, and we're going saying, to the exact same right yeah. now. Uh, if, we're the, if we're the three judges, it's mm-hmm. so far it's unanimous Bradley. Bradley, again, starting off the round doing what do he needs to do. But he's, you see, yeah, and he's just, he's just peppering them now, though. The, the pop isn't there as much as it was in previous rounds. <coughs> it's not until Provodnikov starts landing his power shots that Bradley decides to start throwing more heat in his punches. There's up, and he Bradley has a, a tool belt. He's landing some uppercuts. He's landing body shots. He's, he's getting. I just feel on. like Bradley's mad because it's like, dude, I'm hitting you with. I hit you with an eight piece combo, mm. a one two, a hook to the body, That's... all different types of stuff, and you don't flinch or do anything. What gives? That was great work, you guys. This is this fight so far is much more dominant than I remember. It's much more dominant, Tim Bradley. Yeah, I remember this fight being a lot Same. closer. This is two rounds for Ruslan, and then domination by Tim Bradley. Exactly, and you would you would think Bradley would be the one that's out of it at this point, especially after those first two rounds. But he he gathered himself immediately. And yeah, look, look at the work he's doing. That's that's great work. You can be a Bradley hater if you want. You can't deny it. Those combinations, that hand speed, and the way he's mixing up those punches. Anybody who's a fan of boxing can see that. He's getting out of dodge. When he's boxing, he's doing brilliant work. Well, I think he's trying shot. to say, dog, get off me. Like, dude, the, <laughs> Tim kind of got, kind of did that drop and oh. sit on the rope thing. So, Ruslan really oh. hurt Tim. Tim's got spaghetti legs. Yes. He was doing so well up until that point. Oh. And this is this is brilliant. I mean, stuff. this is crazy. This is just all punches. That oh is just God. all punches. You so we got it three rounds to two. Jeez. So that's that is that one is of the best amazing. rounds you could watch. And that it, it is forty what do we have? Fifty eight, fifty what would what would three rounds to two be scored? Or no, it's we have it. No, we have it three rounds to three because we're going into the seventh. So we have it a draw right yes. now. Right? Or am I contradicting myself? Uh, that's well, well, who are we giving it to? Which, I think that's a Provodnikov round, even though not. Tim did the a lot of good work. <clears throat> he got hurt at the end of the round, nearly got dropped. Look at that hook. Ooh. Yeah, that was that was a. Up until that point, that was a phenomenal round from Bradley. It's kind of a I think that that just goes to Ruslan just based off of the dramatic punches were landed by Ruslan. So now we got, uh, what would that be, 56, 56, <coughs> yeah, 3, 3. 3 so 30, yeah. uh, so that would be, fuck, man, is that 67? 67, 67? <laughs> You're like, yeah, exactly. I don't even know, bro. No, it is. It is because you had three with seven, and that's ten. And yeah, that's, that's how you do it. <laughs> so now Tim's hurt. Tim's Bradley, really hurt. Look, 
57 yeah. 57. So Harold once tell. again has the same card as us. Oh, yeah. So yeah. we're good. 57 57. We're idiots. We put a six there. So yeah. Bradley's really smothering Provodnikov now. I think he knows when he's really close on the inside, he's safe. And when he's on the outside box, that mid range, it's getting to get right his safe there. spots, yeah. is where he's got to walk through fire. Yeah, exactly. And you can see on this round, he's he's coming in leading with his head, which Bradley was a he's, he's had a lot of headbutts in this fight. I'm surprised that hasn't happened in this one. But he, when he's coming in, he's leading with his head, and his sole intention is to just get on the inside there to avoid those those power punches in that mid range. Yeah, Tim's not doing too hot this round, man. His legs don't look good. No, his legs. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, it really looks like this round, Tim's just trying to get his legs back. It looks like he's doing a whole lot of moving and shaking just to get yeah. just to get back. He almost stumbled on his feet touching the ropes. Like, he's just looking to get himself back, and yeah. Ruslan's looking to catch him with that right hand. Ooh. <coughs> Ruslan's landing it. It's just not a lot of power behind it right now. Bradley's doing a damn hell of a job of keeping away. Credit to Pat Russell for not really being in the action and letting the fighters fight. Referees don't really get applauded for not being in the action. Yeah. But really refing a great fight outside of not calling that knockdown in the first round, which, as crazy as it sounds, probably excusable because of the angle. Yeah, exactly. And... The fact that he didn't stop it after that flurry on the on the ropes in that second round as well was a great call. Okay, so we got Bradley is kind of stealing the round. I think we got a Bradley stole the round. What do you think? Yeah, exactly. I'm I'm with it. Provodnikov landed a couple of shots. And he was so 67, 66. I think that that's when this <laughs> fight's over. You're going to look at round seven and say that's a crucial round in the scoring of this fight, because that was a fight that either fighter could have won. I agree. I'm curious to see but what the judges' scorecards look like. We'll look at that. We're going to go deep dive. Up. Yeah, definitely. So, according to power punches, they're saying Provodnikov threw two more that landed, but I don't really look at that stat, because they don't call a jab a power punch, and a jab is a very effective punch. And Tim's mostly jabbing. Yeah, and I... And I did see a couple of punches, power punches from Provodnikov that landed that had no power behind it. But the fact that it wasn't a jab did land. So it didn't make a big effect on me. Look at Bradley's face, though. These guys are both swollen. So once again, Letterman siding with us. Same exact card as us. We're not looking at Letterman's card. We're just saying what we're scoring. And Harold has the same same card as us. Tim... It gets caught with a left hook early in the eighth round and kind of stumbles. It really looks like his feet aren't all here coming into the eighth round. Yeah, <clears throat> you can tell his uh, his chin is softened up already by this point, too, because that, that left hook wasn't very powerful, but it got his attention. He's got some bounce in his I mean, this is a weird round because Provodnikov is abandoning <coughs> everything except looking to land a right hand. And he just got hit with a cold one, too. It pushed his head back like a Pez dispenser. Yeah, definitely. From, off of a lead right hand as well. They're doing that awkward thing. Let's interview the corner man in between the rounds of a hard fight. I understand it in an easier fight, but we're going to do it oh, in yeah. a crisis situation. Probably not the best. <laughs> Tim's landed with straight punches. He's really just going around in the same direction. Ruslan's following him, and he's just throwing a one-two jab to mix it up and throwing a one-two, and Ruslan's walking in. 
and I don't know if you heard both Freddie Roach on the last round and uh, Gerald Diaz in this round both said that they were close to stopping the fight, which is very interesting when both corners are thinking about stopping the fight in such a, a grueling way. Well, I think it also speaks to the level of punishment both guys are <coughs> taking and giving. So this yeah. eighth round is a pretty dominant Bradley round. He just got caught with a punch that might slip and switch this Ooh. round, but he's boxing the brakes off of Ruslan so he far. But he's found himself in the corner. Yeah. And he, he did a smart thing. He tied up immediately. But you can see his legs, his legs were giving out on him during that, that clinch there a little bit. This is the most moving that Bradley's done the whole entire fight though. He's he's usually had like a little decent walking pace, but he's he's definitely up on his bicycle this round a little bit. Got about thirty or uh, twenty seconds left. See if that's usually what Ferodnikov is trying to do as well as land a big one. But he's he's bloodied up now too. Bradley's ending the round strong. And he didn't let Kovanikov get his shots off. He held, ran that clock a little bit, landed another combination. He, he got that. It was a clear bat Bradley round. Yep. So that's 77-75. Tim Bradley going into the ninth round. Really surprising how wide yep. my card is for Bradley. At the time, I felt like Ruslan was really in this fight. Which I guess he is. He is in the fight, 77-75. But I remember watching and feeling like Ruslan's really close to winning this fight. Maybe it's later? Or maybe I remembered wrong? Yeah. He must have, I know he had the, the, the knockdown in the 12th, I believe. But I'm wondering if he had another late rally, too. We will see. Legendary fight that we're watching... Both guys are really banged up. Harold Letterman, per usual, is scoring the fight the same as us, which that's pretty cool because he's a legend. Rest in peace, Harold. And um, it is a tough situation. You see how fast Pat Russell got out of the corner there? He told him to clean up the ice. and he. I mean, Pat Russell's out, really out refing a great fight. And Pat Russell was kind of like the the legendary ref. He refed Rio Salvarado and he refed Bradley Ruslan and honestly probably allowed Bradley to take the punches because of the backlash of the Rio Salvarado stoppage. Yeah, true. And the funny thing about these two guys is uh, Ruslan fought Alvarado and stopped them, and Bradley yeah, fought that's, Rios. Uh, I never would have thought of that, but that is a great thing to think about. Yeah, it's especially after this war that they went through. And he's definitely tagging Ruslan. He's got Ruslan on the ropes again. This is where Bradley does some decent work on the inside. You see that hook there? <laughs> Ruslan's definitely leaking. And I, I have a sense that at the end of this round, we're going to see a... Because Bradley's exuding a lot of energy right now. I can see a, a Ruslan comeback, comeback in the second half of this round. Uh, oh, there's the combo. Ruslan landing these punches. There it is. Oh, and Bradley going right back. So we haven't seen action like this since early in the fight when they're trading, and that's when that's it's when great this to see when these exciting moments happen. It tends to be really bad news for Tim. Yeah. Well, that was the more dull right the here. fight is, the better. Ooh. Kovanikov, he definitely looks hurt. Ooh. Ooh, there's another hook there. Oh, there's that right hand again. 
So this is this Here is a Provodnikov round. round. We're looking at 86, 85 Ooh. Ruslan. This is a late round surge. Corner said we might stop it, and he picked up a round. I think this one I'm going to still get to Bradley. So we're split. This might we're be the split. One round we finally... Okay, so I'm at 86, 85, and what are you at? 87, 84? Yeah. Let me make sure I start writing this down now since we're. <laughs> I just feel like Bradley did. Um, he if If. When you break the round down in segments, he took the, the first and second half, and provided that took the middle. Oh, I just, as a judge, this is one of these close rounds, and I just favor Ruslar on this. So I've got it one one point going into the tenth round. I got it eighty six eighty five for Rus or for Timothy Bradley. But this is a very very tough fight. Neither <laughs> one is happy. Both guys are beat up. Let's see what. So the Harold like agrees with you. Yeah. yeah, Harold agrees with you. So you're probably more right than me, but I would have probably gone 86, 85 Ruslan in that round. So Yeah, in, th- in this fight, I don't think anybody's more right than anyone else. Ooh, tough round. Right hand for so now we're we're getting to the home stretch. We got three rounds left, 10, 11, 12. And yeah. Another stiff jab there. Yeah, it's pretty rough. Well. Talking about he's ready to stop it. <laughs> and it was that last round. Bradley was really catching. That's why I gave the edge to Bradley there. He was he was hurting them a little bit. Provodnikov letting his hands go a lot more this round than, than ever. He's not landing much. Bradley's still in control, but he's he's letting his hands go more than than usual. It is it is interesting though, because I do remember it being a lot more Provodnikov dominant than what I'm seeing right now. This yeah, is... it's it's more Tim Bradley dominant with spurts of Ruslan. I remember yeah, it being exactly. much more competitive. Yeah, same. I think it's just, it's so much more powerful when Provodnikov is landing these, these shots. It's more evident when Bradley's hurt than when Ruslan's hurt. But look at his face, man. That, I think the context, you know, I, too, the moment in time where Tim Bradley was, Ruslan never yeah. fighting for $100,000, and the fact this was so, I think that that sways your mind at the time. Yeah, definitely. So we got – this is looking like a clear Bradley round. Oh, yeah, definitely. Veronica looks in very bad shape, and I definitely see where Freddie's coming from when he said he was ready to stop it. Yeah, he looks like a like a villain. He looks like uh, – what's his <laughs> name? Ch- One-Eyed <laughs> Willie from the Goonies, basically. <laughs> he does. Bradley's done a great job on that eye. And this is just all Bradley. So on my card, I got it 96-94. Tim Bradley, very dominant. Yeah, another good right hand. <coughs> this one going 96-97-93, Bradley. So we got... On both of our cards, basically, <coughs> Ruslan's pretty much out of the fight. Yeah. So, and Freddie just said it. We need a knockout to win. 
So Freddie's basically Freddy's saying, if you don't do something, the fight's over. And HBO is zooming in on his eyes. So this is a storyline that we uh, probably in the moment weren't thinking about because it really felt like Ruslan was in this fight. He's spitting up blood too. Okay, so I got it. 96, 94. You got 97, 93. Letterman's got 97, 93. We've all got it pretty dominant for Tim Bradley. Yeah, definitely. So, Ruslan's coming out. He's got his little jumping Roy Jones left hook. Ooh. He actually looks the way he did in the first round, in a sense. Yeah. He's, he's, he's got his head moving back. You can definitely feel the intensity in round 11. Yeah. You haven't felt this since round four or five. Ooh. I just feel urgency. You see that right hand. Yeah, that right hand landed and Bradley immediately held him. You could sense the urgency in the corner right now from Freddie Roach. And even though English isn't his first language, I know he could tell that his trainer was not happy with him. Yeah, this is just like a moment where it's like, this is your opportunity. You're on HBO. You might never get to fight on HBO again. You're fighting this guy who was one of the five biggest names in the sport at the time. And you got to do something. Yeah, definitely. Bradley's still up to this point winning the round. I would say it's close, though, because Pravonica is definitely pushing forward. This round is up for the taking, basically. And they're swinging. They are swinging. Bradley's punches are looking slow, <laughs> slower and slower. Big left hook, uppercut, whatever that was from Karadnikov. Yeah, I mean, this is, it. honestly, in hindsight, no, we, we know about the damage to people's brains. This is looking scary because the way they're reacting, their motor skills are depleting. And Bradley's eyes looking worse for wear. It hasn't looked that bad the entire fight. It's definitely closing He is. He is. Oh, yeah. Bradley looks done right now at this point. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, this is a tough round to score. Who do you give it to? Yeah. It's, I think that I'm going to go. Ooh. I'm going to go for Vodnikov in this one. So I'm going to go. I think I so am that's too. Uh, my card. It's 105, 104 for Tim Bradley right now, going into the last round. I have it. Uh, 106, 103. Or wait, no, I have it. One oh, I have yeah, 105 to 104 because I had 96, 94. So it's 105, 104. And it's really just yeah. coming down to two <laughs> rounds. It's coming down to the seventh round. It's coming down to that swing round where you and Harold Letterman saw it one way, and I awarded Ruslan's activity at the end of the round. It's a very close fight. It's kind of strange that it's close because it really feels, in hindsight, like Tim Bradley dominated a majority of this fight. Yeah, it does, which is very weird that it is so close. When you said, <coughs> when you said 105, 104, it's basically – up for up for grabs in that last round there. On my card, yeah. And I thought Bradley was a clear cut. Yeah, I thought Bradley was a clear cut winner. Yeah, the, the damage on both of these guys' faces is bad. And Harold has it one hundred seven to one hundred two, which. Yeah, he gave that one to Bradley. I mean, I guess you could get there, but it seems like Ruslan probably deserves a little bit more credit than. Um. Yeah. That. 
like that just kind of doesn't reflect the work that Ruslan's been putting in, but I could see it, you know, maybe we kind of gave Ruslan too much credit in the last round. So Ruslan's coming out in this final round and it just looks like he knows he's got to stop him. And he's just right on his ass and he's just punching with him. Wow. Bradley is um, wobbly legs. He is there for the taking, but Kravonikov is too tired to take him. And you can tell now Pat Russell is a lot closer to these guys because he's, he's ready to stop it. He sees what's going on. He hasn't been this, this close to these guys the entire fight, but he's he's watching. Ooh, great flurry from Bradley. So Bradley's pretty doggone hurt. Yeah. And because his legs are just giving out, he just went down for a, a small little push, lean, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> He's so, still mixing up his punches. Not much talking from us, but Tim goes into the ropes. Ruslan's <laughs> oh, on him. He's punching. Is. He's punching. Big hook. He's hurt bad. And now Tim. And I think this is Tim's going to get dropped. Oh, yeah. Bradley is. He got hurt with a Ooh, right oh. hand, and he stumbles back into the corner. It's really he hurt. He's hurt sitting bad. on the ropes. He's trying to hold. It's similar to that earlier in the fight where he got hurt. He doesn't have the strength to hold on. He's got a really big shiner on his left eye. He got hit with a two-piece. Oh. He's still getting hit. He's just exchanging. He's really hurt. Pat Russell's not stepping the action. He, he's, Tim takes oh. a knee. That could have been stopped right there easily. easily. That could have been stopped, but Tim, Tim really smart. was smart there and saved himself. So on my card, controversially, I have at 114-113 for Ruslan Probodnikov based on the knockdown in the last round. That is, yes, I have it 10-8. That's 114-113, uh, Bradley. So, so you had a wider Bradley. card, and it barely. <laughs> so we're looking at a real split decision here. Yeah. So, <laughs> after so the knockdown, on... uh, Ruslan really thinks he won because he's doing the the tears of joy crying in the ring. And Brad, Brad Jacobs, the top rank, looks pissed in the ring. People do not look excited. Artie Palulu looks like he kind of got one on Bob Arum. And... <laughs> There is a lot of urgency in that ring. There is a lot of people that don't look excited. And so you had a 114-113 Provodnikov, right? I did. Because so I had it 105-103. Or 105-104. And then with the knockdown, made it 114-113. And I believe Harold Letterman has a 115-112. I've got to double check. With his score. I think he has it one, yeah, 115, 112 for Bradley. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm so 114, on, 113. You're, he's 115, 112, both for Bradley, and you're 114, 113 for Bradley. Yes. So we're just all over the place. <laughs> Let's see what the, uh, ooh, those are some vicious shots. Bradley was, those ropes, those ropes saved Bradley a lot in this fight. I think Bradley knowing how to move when he's hurt saved Bradley as well. Because yeah, Bradley think, also just knew how to roll into the ropes. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. His ring awareness, he knew how to fall into the ropes each and every time. Those are some wicked shots. Thank you very much, Steve Whitefeld. There's the right hand that knocked Bradley back into the ropes. 
that hook, yeah, he he flew. <laughs> Bradley flew against those ropes there. Yeah, one fifteen, one twelve. So between our three cards, we have a split decision for Tim Bradley, and I think the official verdict was a split decision for Tim Bradley. Yeah, so, oh, it, it was either split or majority. We'll find out in a second. We will find out. The crowd is kind of Tim Bradley. Kind of was never getting his respect in his prime. Ruslan kind of won over the fans. So here comes the verdict. So give us the. Let's see what you got. Judges Dinkin and Gantu turn in identical scorecards of 114 to 113. And Judge Geis Sr. scores it 115 to 112. All three in favor of the winner. Oh, wow. By way of unanimous decision. And still. So it, was a, it wasn't a split. It was a unanimous. We had a, two of them scored it the way I did, 114-113, and one of them scored it 115-112 the way Letterman did. So, okay. So that's, um, that is our first rewatchable, or what do we, what do we call that, fight, fight watchable. Um, that's the first one we've ever done. Kind watch of along. A, watch. I think the fight watch along, uh, kind of interesting. I'm gonna definitely. Yeah. I think I definitely am gonna have to like watch it one time before we do these, um, and kind of think about stuff. Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed this too. This is the first time I've I've heard people do this. Um, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this. This is pretty awesome. <laughs> Well, I'm glad. To, I'm glad that you enjoyed it. We should do a poll for the next one. Well, you'll be on that. I'm a little bit tired because I'm exhausting myself and I'm just kind of burnt out and I'm just a nervous wreck. So I think we're gonna just call it right here. But if you guys like yeah, it, you can just leave a comment and we're just gonna have like at least two or three months bearing my health, bearing Felix's health, to be able to do some fight watchables, watch alongs. So. Give us that info. Um, yeah, and we'll be tagged on the Twitter feed, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. For more great shows, please go to iTunes or wherever podcasts are found and leave us a review.